So I apologize. This is my uh, Muller band that I have that I've been practicing with for some time. So hopefully this will show a technique that will be valuable for you and your lab. So one question that I get often is when they're doing additional like an arch expander or anything like that that requires some pretty heavy pressure on the band. It will have sufficient sufficient strength to have just the wire on there, but to help spread out that pressure that's going to be coming in from the side, this is one thing that I've done to help improve that. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the wire on the corner here at a 45 degree angle and then we are going to walk our way out. So let's just start on this tip here. I'm gonna hit right on top. It's, if you have argon, it's, it's gonna help. One of the things that I've been told is any weld that you like without argon, you're gonna like better with argon. And with stainless steel, we're gonna see some shinier welds because of that. So I'm gonna adjust my spot size for this project to be somewhere in the middle and then I want to be that does look sinister doesn't it so like orange orange red I think that's power level 9 and then we're going to do a test weld to see if we have our spot size right it's pretty close I go just a tiny bit smaller, so that's pushing the knob, the adjustment knob, away from you. Just minorly. Keeping the same power, we're gonna hit it again. Okay, right on top of the wire. Okay, we're getting some melting. Okay. Still want just a slightly smaller spot size. See if that's better. And this is kind of the the challenge, right, with with the dado. Is just finding a good spot size. So I was able to bond that no problem. So now now that I have a weld down that's holding it independently, now I'm gonna for my view coming straight up and down, I'm going to be at a 45 degree angle, or roughly so. And I'm going to want to hit it on the wire, and then I want to slowly, I'm going to turn that down two ticks, it's just melting the wire just a little too much for my liking, there we go. So hitting on that corner still. I'm not even touching the, the molar band at all. I'm going to just slowly weld till that metal comes down. Until I get a nice even joint. And then I'm, I'm going to repeat that on the other side. Again, 45 degree angle. And this is from my view, of course. I'm going to go on the wire, but close to the to that corner so it can flow down onto this molar band, reducing the risk of it punching all the way through. So if we look at that, we're seeing shiny welds and a good bonding. Now what I like to do to help save some time for myself is I'll go right on top of it, going straight up and down to smooth that that bump of wire. So it's a little bit more comfortable for the patient. And then if you wanted to build that up more, we can bend this filler wire back and forth and it will break right at the weld site. And then we can, employing the same techniques that we just did, 45 degree angle, on top of that wire and slowly working our way down to the band. 
and then we have a nice little bump. Then we can use this built up stage in order to put that bigger wire that's going to be in charge of pushing against it. And that way we can be a little bit more aggressive about adding that wire. Now let's say you wanted that, that stage to be bigger. Well you just employ the same techniques that we did, right? We want to, if I can angle it just right, 45 degree angle, on the wire, making a few wells so you can manipulate it just a little bit. And then I'm going to hit the wire. And push that metal down onto the band. And then slowly walking walking it out. And this is going to take some practice, but once you start seeing the metal move the way you want it to, then you can start being a little more brave about specific choices that you're going to be doing to move that metal the way you want it to. So I'm going to hit this other side on the wire, 45 degree angle. And I was just a little aggressive, just in the sense of making this video fast and I accidentally punched a hole, which is a bummer, but I have good news. In, in, in this case, I can just fill it in, we're good. So now that I have this thick landing pad, we we'll have a significant place to push a big wire onto it, or if it's being welded like this, we can weld it to that and have a, a less concern of bonding a big wire to this small band and not punching a hole through it. So, another technique that I like to cover, let's say we, we finish all these welds, right? Let's just add this wire just for sake of, this is our molar band. Uh, with that race on it. Right, that's our essentially our finished product right there. Well there's if I can get it a little closer. Hopefully there's adequate detail there. There's a bunch of tiny welds and it makes a nice texture on it. I think we can do better. So making the spot size as large as it is, so grabbing that knob and sliding it towards you, and then maybe increasing the power by one or two. I'm just going to go over the top of that. And what that's going to do couple more. There we go. At that lar large spot size, it's just going to smooth everything out. Like you polished it that way. So hopefully you can see that where it's it's really slick. No bumps whatsoever. That would be comfortable in a patient's mouth. And if you wanted to take the time, if you wanted to do a smaller spot size and fill that in so there's no less chance of getting food in there, you can take your time to do that. But those are the two things that I, I like to employ to give the most success to bonding wires to this. And as you can see, I did a giant ring to this. And it's strong enough that, let me zoom out so it's not quite so insulting to your eyes. So I'm able to bend this back and forth. This, sorry, the molar band will fail before this weld does. Just to give you an idea of how strong these things are. The only reason I'm able to break this off is I've made it thin enough that I can give enough 
leverage to break it off. And it's it's pretty thin at the joints. And let's say that's what you want to do and smooth that out. You can do that for your landing pad as well. So these are two of the main things that's going to help you in your dental lab with different cases. If you have further questions, please reach out to us. We're happy to answer and give advice on how to approach your particular problems.